for ACC basketball as number two Duke visits Clemson. Good evening, everybody. I'm Mike Patrick along with Dick Vitale. It's great to have you with us here at Clemson. After the pounding that Duke took at North Carolina, the single weakness they had was really exposed, the lack of a physical presence offensively and defensively in the middle. Well, I'll tell you, Mike, to have a great team, you got to have balance on the interior. And they went to Rashawn McLeod, and he responded in a big-time way against North Carolina State. There he is, going to post up on the inside. He sits in a box, catches the ball, wheels to the lane, shoots the little jumper to give him some post presence. And then from the perimeter. They got the velvet touch of the Alaskan assassin, Trajan Langdon, shooting 40%. There he is, knocking down a trifecta, and he makes 91% of his free throws as well. This game is so huge for the Clemson Tigers, and usually late in the season, in a home game this big, a senior steps up, and that would be Mr. Buckner. I'll tell you, Mike, big, baby, big this game to Clemson. They need this win badly with five W's and seven losses, and Mr. Buckner's the guy that's got to respond. He's the best post-up guard in America. Here he is showing his versatility as he goes to sit in a low box inside and utilizes great strength, and then he's an excellent baseline player. Watch him step away, catch the ball on the baseline, and he's a baseline beauty. But if they're to win tonight, Terrell McIntyre's got to handle the Duke pressure. This crowd is ready, and my partner, Mr. Patrick, I know is ready. The Tigers started off with such great expectations number five in one preseason bowl but a midseason slump knocked them out of the top 25 now with three excellent games in a row are they ready to rejoin the elite Welcome back to Clemson, South Carolina. For Duke and Clemson, let's take a look at the U.S. Army starting lineups. First for the Blue Devils, it's a balanced offense with Trajan Langdon as the leading scorer, but his 14.8 average is only 12th best in the ACC. Certainly, he is capable of a big night. For Clemson, Terrell McIntyre has made a huge difference in the last three games. He has run the club beautifully with 20 assists and just one turnover during that streak. First meeting between these teams, it wasn't that close most of the time. It was a 24-point lead. They cut it to one, actually had two shots in the last five seconds to win, Dick. I was there for that game, and I'll tell you something. that was the most amazing comeback. Jamison really woke up in that second half, and the penetration of McIntyre was sensational. You talked about his assists and his turnover ratio in the last three games. He's healthy now, Mike, and that is the difference. He's a healthy player, and he's the heart and soul of the Clemson team. Well, let's put it this way. He's healthier. He's not going to get healthy until no. the season is over. Allen's back in the starting lineup. And Allen's back controls the tip for the Clemson Tigers against Shane Battier. Very important for Clemson to get a good start to keep this crowd alive and into this game. McIntyre in the lane. A little hanger won't go for him. Wojciechowski pushes it to Trajan Langdon. Battier came down with that rebound. He's their best rebounder. McLeod, great drive, and Rashawn McLeod gets the first two. He has really developed that scorer's mentality. 27 against NC State and 25 on the road against Florida State. Wojciechowski trying to deny McIntyre. They really live off their pressure defense, dude. They create so much offense. Buckner went right by Carrowell. I'll tell you, he blew by him. That was Matador defense by Carrowell, who's usually very tenacious. Duke knows it's going to be in for a fight tonight before 11,200 here at Little John. Maybe a couple hundred more if the fire marshal isn't watching. McLeod in and out. Weidman with a rebound. Widening that big space eater on the interior. What I like about Buckner, he has excellent shot selection, shooting 54% from the field in the ACC. Almost an illegal screen right there. Allen's back, getting more minutes as the season rolls along. He missed that one. And both guys go to the deck, the two big guys. Allen's back. There's the lob too high from Wojciechowski and an uncharacteristic turnover. Widen is really struggling getting up and down the court. Might have got hurt with that collision with Allen's back. 
Buckner looking for a screen. They lay some really great screens. McIntyre knocked away, got it back. What a nice matchup, Wojciechowski and McIntyre. And that'll be on McLeod. We talked about Buckner in our earlier part of the telecast. Here he is now, showing his ability to put the ball to the deck and explode to the goal. But there's a no-no by Duke. Nobody rotates over to give any help to Carowell. I usually step in that lane and hedge and give some help. Buckner, one of only two Clemson free throw shooters who they want at the line. He's a 69% shooter. That's second best on the team. McIntyre is terrific. The rest of the guys, well, you better not even look at the numbers because the rest of the team shoots a collective 55%. And that really hurts when you lose close games. They've had five L's by five points or less. And when you're losing games like that and you're in a 60 percentile area, very difficult to win. Buckner makes one of two, and he'll get a breather. They lost four games in a row, and I thought Rick Barnes psychologically did a great thing. He brought in a bunch of the students, the Ipte kids, the collegiate group, to come in and watch practice to cheer them up. And since then, they've won three in a row. Johnny Miller in the Clemson lineup. Battier kicks it to Wojo. Has really developed into an outstanding long-range shooter. Well, they got so many lethal weapons from the perimeter. Wojciechowski, Langdon, Chappelle, McLeod. Full court oh, pressure. pressure. Stolen to Wojo. Cre created by the size by Battier, who Mike Krzyzewski told me today at the shoot-around, Mike, that he'll be the best defensive player he's ever coached. That is some statement. That's remarkable. Remember when Billy King was now GM? Oh. He's a great defender to play for Duke. Now working with Larry Brown with Philadelphia. Johnny Miller, number four in the Clemson's lineup. He's coming off a couple of good ball games. So is Jamison. Jamison misses the lean-in. Outlet pass picked by McIntyre. Christie, he's got the range. He's been a big, big player this year. He's second in the league, shooting the trifecta. He has been outstanding for three-point range. At one point, he was over 50%. Now he's down to 43-3, which is second in the league. McLeod just saved it before it crossed midcourt. Anytime you're better than 40%, you are effective from the trifecta. If you're a mathematical genius, that can correlate to about 60% shooting deuces. Exactly. Eight on the shot clock. Rojo, nice dish. Battier against Allen's back, and he hits it. they got to do a better job right now of stopping the penetration of Wojciechowski. Early, he's been able to get into the lane and become the 3-D man. Drive and draw it and dish and a rock. 9-6 Blue Devils. Great environment here. Is that Mike? Todd's oh, tremendous. Great spirit. They know how big this game is. Christie goes inside to Jameson. Jameson was quiet in the first matchup until the second half. Doesn't look at Wojciechowski, Wojo, the Rambo man. You can't allow that kind of dribble penetration. You can't let him get into the gap in the steam that easily. I mean, that's a simple deuce right there for Shane Battier. Fouls on Langdon. Miller goes to the line. He's a 60% shooter. You see the numbers on Wojciechowski. He's number two in the ACC in assists as Miller misses the first. Mike, I know you and I were talking off the air. You're a big, big fan, and so am I, of Harry Carey. And we certainly want to send our sympathy to the Carey family. His enthusiasm was so unique and so special, and I just had great love for what he brought to the broadcast booth. Our best go out to uh, Harry's family and all the people that cared about him. Uh, I grew up listening to Harry Carey do St. Louis Cardinal baseball games on the radio, and he was a real role model for my career, and I will miss him dearly. Holy cow, no doubt about it. Crowd thought they'd get a charging foul. Instead, E. Kara Turbe will pick up a blocking call. E. Turbe called for the foul. As you look at Rick Barnes, who's brought a lot of excitement here to this campus. Really, as you said earlier, the expectations were unbelievable after going to the Sweet 16 last year. In the, in the final in the NCAA before losing to Minnesota in overtime. They finished number eight in the nation. That was the highest ranking they ever had at the end of a year. Tough defense by Clemson. And then they returned all their key players. Exactly. Everybody was really running wild. They were rated as high as top five. Nice beat. Battier down the lane. Walk. Mr. Basketball out of Michigan. They've been very successful, Coach K, going to the state of Michigan for Battier, Michael Chappelle. Mike Krzyzewski did not like the call, but his club is up by two.
number two, Duke, by a pair early with 15.35 to go in the first half. Some other action tonight in the ACC. Georgia Tech really on a roll. Bobby Crimmins has got that club going, and Virginia loses by 19 to North Carolina State. Here's how that affects the standings, and it has a real impact on Clemson because Georgia Tech moves into sole possession of fourth place, and because of the tournament seedings, you want to be in that top four. I'll tell you one thing, Florida State really has slipped badly. Had some tough luck playing without Baker and Randall Jackson in a blowout against Clemson. But their rating RPI is top 20 in America because they have wins over Connecticut, wins over Arizona. But Steve Robinson's club's got to get some wins. Mike, I think you need seven. At least seven this year in the conference to get a bid. Six and ten it will not get it done unless you really get hot in the ACC tournament. Well, remember the one year Georgia Tech was eight and eight, 18 and 12 overall, and they didn't get in. So sometimes even eight and eight isn't good enough. That was Miller with a miss. Jamison offensive rebound. He's one of the best in the country at that. He's very physical. The year you were talking about was 1995. 94, they were 7 and 9 at 18. 16 and 13, and they didn't get in. Nice move on the baseline by McLeod, but he can't get it to fall. McIntyre on the run. See, I think a key player is Jamison. He's got to establish some post presence inside. Vincent Witt, a big time scorer, missed the shot. Jamison kept it alive. Wow. And McIntyre and Jamison come out with it. Look at that body. I mean, if that's not an Arnold Schwarzenegger body, then I haven't seen a body. I know I'm blind in one eye, but look at those guns he has. He was a heck of a football player in high school. Got an offer from Florida to play defense. McIntyre stripped by Wojo. The favor returned at the other end and then tracked down finally by Chappelle. Chappelle a slasher. Got to watch Avery in a game like this. He can score big for that. Offensive foul on Chappelle. Jamison taking the charge. In this league, you cannot get a running start and try to drive that far to the bucket. Well, people are always going to rotate over and close off the driving angle normally. You're going to see Jamison now come over right into the lane. There's the big guy laying his body out there. I wouldn't want to run into that body, Mike. Third team foul against Duke. Clemson has committed only one. Miller trying to go end to end. Well, they had Jamison missed him. He was posting up big inside against Burgess. Now they got to switch inside. Miller seems to be playing with more confidence than he was early in the season. He was a big-time player early in his career at Temple, then had a lot of injuries. Iturbe, who doesn't shoot very often and is normally a good shot. He missed that one badly, though. A great passer, though, has tremendous vision. Avery is in for Duke, and he will draw a foul on the jump shot. I like Avery's potential as a scorer. He's going to be a one heck of a guard at Duke when he steps in and starts to get 30 minutes a night when Wojo graduates. He's a kid that can play either one of the guard slots. He's a combination guard. Johnny Miller picks up his first foul, and Avery goes to the line. You mentioned, you mentioned Miller a little bit earlier. He made nine threes in one game in the NCAA against Cincinnati. But that's what he hasn't done for the, this club this year. He has not shot the three that well. And look at the substitutions. I mean, both coaches go so deep, they just rotate players in and out. And they're not just putting bodies on the floor. They're putting guys out there who can play. Well, that's why there was so much optimism about Rick Barnes and his club. They won 23 games last year, and everybody thought with all those players returning and the depth factor and their physical physical ability and defensive ability, they would have a phenomenal year. No one thought 15 and 10 fighting for a berth right now. Avery makes it a one-point Duke lead. Christie trying to get some operating move against Langdon. Scoop shot. Missed it. Kicked out of bounds to Duke. Duke's got a really tough finish, Mike. Not only do they have this game, they got a date coming up on ABC with UCLA, and then they have that game with uh, down there in Atlanta against a hot Georgia Tech club as well. And then February 28th, that school from down there in Tar Heel land comes over to the Cameron Indoor Stadium. Nice screen outside by Domzowski, but they can't get anything out of it. Burroughs is also in there. Playing Burgess and Domzowski Burgess, together. Burgess, excuse me. Yeah, Burgess playing out inside with Domzowski, getting some size together. Give him a twin tower effect. 
Now, here's some great potential news for Duke. Elton oh, wow. Brand, the sensational freshman who missed most of the year with a broken bone in his foot, is practicing again. He can be back by the end of the regular season if he can regain his conditioning. What a boost he would be for this club. Well, I was part of his workout this morning, and I watched him work out, and I can tell you something. He showed no pain, no effect whatsoever, and they're thinking, here's a little scoop, that he'll probably dress on Sunday against UCLA. Yeah, I'm so. sure. I'm sure working with you only set back a couple of weeks. <laughs> no, I was just giving him some drills to Quinn Snyder, who was putting him through a bunch of drills one on one. And I'll tell you, he's so effective. What a beautiful kid! And that's big time news for Mike Shashevsky and his staff. The fact that they may have Elton Brand for the finish of the season. Mike Shashevsky said if he had played the whole year by the end of the season, he would have been one of the best three players in the ACC. Not freshmen, players. So what a compliment to Elton Brand. Well, he was the best center, I believe, in the league. Even when he stepped out after his first 11 games, leaving Duke and scoring a rebound. Carowell, pull up jumper, won't go. Buckner with a rebound against Domzowski. See, Buckner gives you that versatility. He can rebound, he can step to the wing. Maybe he's playing on a perimeter right now. Langdon matched up with him. What a great matchup. Langdon just got bumped and he missed Buckner. This is Christie. One of those real streak shooters tries to reverse and he's fouled. That'll be on Battier? No. Chris Burgess. I'll tell you, Mike, you mentioned Tony Christie. He's had a heck of a year this year. He's one of the most improved players in the conference. Watch Langdon right now. Buckner's going to run him into a screen. We're going to see him get bumped. There's Langdon right there. That's the screen. See, now you got to catch and hit him. They don't recognize it. you got to learn to recognize your star player when he's open. Christie shooting 48% from the free throw line. He's nearly that good from three-point range. How do you explain that? Unbelievable. And then you look at their numbers in five losses. They have shot less than five points each of those games. 62% as a team in those games from the line. If you shoot 70, you win some of those games. Offensive foul push off on Muhammad Wooney going for the offensive rebound. He cleared out underneath. That'll be his first and the fourth team foul against Clemson. They had that ugly, ugly game down in North Carolina, which I thought was ugly for basketball and you as well, with those 41 fouls called in that physical, physical battle. Duke with no field goals in four minutes and 20 seconds. They've been doing that defensively, though. The first 13 minutes against Florida right. State, they held them without a field goal. And I believe in the last seven or eight minutes, it was against, I believe, Wake Forest didn't get a field goal. It's a total of something like 22 and a half minutes that exactly. nobody got a field goal against them. It's amazing. Well, they're so physical defensively. they really a very aggressive team. They understand the principles of how to play defense, except against North Carolina. I thought those fouls were legit calls. I really do, Mike. Well, they made up their mind early. North Carolina was not going to get anything easy inside. They made good on that, but they only ended up with four players. That was unbelievable. Four. That was embarrassing at the end. It really was. Yeah, it was. It was. For basketball. Wooney at the baseline. Little 10-footer spun out on him, but knocked out of bounds by the Blue Devils. I thought Wooney was going to be really a much more effective player after watching him against Minnesota in the NCAA tournament last year, where he made 10 free throws. We've got a timeout, a one-point game. Scoring affair here at Clemson, South Carolina, 10-9. The Blue Devils by a point. Let's bring you up to date on some ACC news. Antoine Jamison leading in all three of these categories. Points, rebounds, and field goal percentage. Only Horace Grant and Tim Duncan in the history of the ACC have ever done that. Curtis Staples needs only 13 to become the NCAA's all-time leader in three-point shots. And home team records, North Carolina and Duke are perfect. The rest of the ACC is big. Busy eating its young. They, the rest of the teams are under 500 at home. I'll tell you, something looking at that stat, that means that you don't want to go to Duke and you don't want to go to Carolina. But I'll tell Jameson, two other guys did that, didn't they, Mike? Did Tim Duncan and Horace Grant Duncan achieve and Horace that? Grant. Carowell off the miss. Duncan playing brilliantly for San Antonio. He and Keith Van Horn, what a year they're having. Both guys who stayed four years. Exactly. I hope Jameson hears that. I wrote about that. Jameson and Carter, if you watch the pass inside. Nice feed. Carowell to Battier. Good inside feed. I hope Jameson comes back. I hope Carter comes back. I hope Pierce comes back. I'm biased. I want to see them all come back. 
Nice job reversing the ball against the trap. One step behind the basketball. Well coached against the pressure. Jamison against Battier. Finally gets it to McIntyre with 22 on the shot clock. They've contained McIntyre's penetration so far early in the game. He's so effective getting into that three-second area. Duke extending that man-to-man. -man. Well, that's their defense. They force eight more turnovers than the opposition in terms of, when you look at their statistical numbers, unbelievable. Force well, about 22 turnovers a game. And when they force one, they make you pay for it, too. They can really get down court. If Turbe is going to come back in, Muhammad Wooney will get a breather. That was a problem against North Carolina. I thought they were stunned and shot after averaging 19 points at halftime margin of victory. They were unbelievable as you watch drilled a trifecta. They were down 16, and they were stunned at halftime in that game. Terrell McIntyre with a sweet pull-up stroke. McLeod had it knocked away, got it back. McLeod's got to get some looks from out here. There's McLeod. Rashawn McLeod with a three-point shot, 38% on the year. He's been big from out in that area. Wojo nearly got it from McIntyre, but the smallest scholarship player in the ACC goes right down the gut. Langdon back the other one. I'll tell you what made that happen for McIntyre was the fact that he knocked down a trifecta. Now they have to extend on him, and he just blew right by the defense. Showing his versatility, went from the perimeter. Now he's staring at him. Look at him. Triple threat position. Said, Wojo, you can't get me, man. Wojo, I'm the man. I'm the man. I'm the man here at Clemson. He says, you're the man. Duke with the basketball and a one-point lead. We're under 10 minutes to go in the half. Good basketball game. Really outstanding. A lot of intensity. McLeod goes baseline. He'll draw the foul. See, that's what they want McLeod to give him, Mike. They want a little post presence out of him because they're not going to get it anywhere else until Mr. Brand gets back in that lineup. Jamison picks up his first personal. Oh, you want something? I'm going to lay something on you. This is unbelievable today at the shoot-around. They're playing UCLA on Sunday. Mike Krzyzewski is living. He is living because he wants to extend that deal with UCLA. He said we should always play. Two great schools, great basketball tradition. He said, Dick, they don't want to play us anymore. They don't want to play us. They said if they're afraid, we're going to recruit kids from out of California. He said, hey, let me tell you something. I think we're recruiting kids nationally because yeah. our name is Duke, and we've had lots of success. I mean, that game should go on and on. Mr. Lavin, hear me. Play the Dukies. Your fans want it. Your players want it. Six points, one rebound so far for McLeod. He misses that free throw. Two-point Blue Devil margin. Clemson much better than we saw against North Carolina. You see a lot more rhythm to their offense, a lot more movement. A lot of that credit belongs to McIntyre, his ability to withstand the pain of that bad foot in a turbo. Traveled, shuffled the pivot foot. When you've got a guy like McIntyre, it's not just during the games. The other players on the team need to practice with him. And he finally went to Rick Barnes and said, I'm just going to suck it up and play. Yeah, they, and practice. They feed off him. There's no doubt about it because he's your catalyst. He's your engine. Langdon and Buckner, what a matchup. That could be for all ACC honors. Those two guys going head-to-head. -head. Couldn't it, though? McLeod through the lane, had a tip bounds to the Tigers. Three spots are locked. I don't think there's any way Antoine Jameson, Vincent Carter, and Matt Harpering are not on the All-ACC team. But who's going to be the other two? You got Cody, you got Shaman Williams, you got Nolan down in Virginia, you got Buckner, you got Langdon, McLeod. I'll let you pick the other two. <laughs> Thank you. I'll pick the first three. Thanks. Buckner from outside. He's developed range this year. And Turbay got the rebound, and he's fouled by Wojciechowski. Saturday, ABC Sports, Payne Weber College Basketball. First, Clemson, these same Tigers against Virginia or Louisville against Memphis Saturday at 1.30. That will be followed immediately by number three, Arizona, against Oregon Saturday at 4.30. Hope you'll join ABC Sports for those games. I'll be down here at Virginia and Charlottesville for that Clemson game with Brett Musburger, and then we'll head for UCLA and Duke on Sunday. Arizona is one of the hot clubs in the country. Virginia really struggling. Nolan and Staples, and that's about it. Viterbe will be called for the foul against Carroll. Viterbe leaning in. Carl Hess with the call. 
Rick Barnes did a solid job at Providence. Loves it down here at Clemson. His wife loves it. He loves this area. Rick going for his 200th career win as a head coach tonight. Wouldn't it be sweet for him against a team as small wow. as Duke? Battier. Got the offensive rebound when Jamison and the Turbe tipped it up in the air. Battier trying to be a little bit more aggressive on the offensive end. Such a tremendous defensive player because he can play so many players. He can guard people on a perimeter on the inside. The lead is four. This is McIntyre. Except he couldn't guard Jamison, but nobody can. <laughs> Jamison powers his way in. Basket counts and a foul. Jamison has to be so effective inside for this club to be effective. There's Battier right now. Now, Jamison, the ball comes off his fingers, right into Battier's hands, but then he makes up on the other end. Here's the big guy taking it to the goal, the big tight end. I mean, he's got a body like Keith Jackson when he played in the NFL. See, I follow that NFL. I want you to know, I watch you on every Sunday. We you appreciate and Theisman. it. I watch you as the quarterback, and Theismann was the receiver. No, nah, he's always the quarterback. <laughs> the great quarterback. Jamison trying for the three-point play and hits it. He's really struggling on the line, but gets that one to fall. 18-17. I don't know. He's a 50% shooter. There are guys on this team that aren't that good. Exactly. Crowd really into it. McLeod, tough pull-up jumper. He's been big all year long. You look at his numbers in the ACC. He leads Duke in scoring in ACC action. He sh scores better than Langdon does, 17 a game in the ACC. And he is willing to take the big pressure shots, too. No doubt about it. He wants the rock in his hands. Miller cut off at the baseline. This is Vincent Witt. This is the kid that's a mystery to me, Mike. I saw him. He was sensational against South Carolina. Had 17, was a great slasher. Sometimes he's terrific. Sometimes he disappears. Same with Muhammad Wooney, who just scores here. There's Wooney taking the ball to the goal strong. As you said earlier, they got players that can play off that bench. It's the consistency that has really killed him. Carowell wheels in. Here's Carowell from out of St. Louis. Teammate of Lauren Wood. So beautiful to see Lauren back in the Isn't lineup. It? Uh, Dave Odom did a great job with him. Yes, he did. He did something for the young man's future, not just in regards to basketball. Nice with, pass. Nice bounce pass to Butler, and it's blocked. Great defense by McLeod rotating over with Batty A. Not many people block Buckner, and there's the travel. They'll turn it over. Buckner, even at 6'4", doesn't get many stuffed. Exactly. He's so strong and physical. We're going to see Rashawn McLeod. He wants the rock. He wants to be a PTP. -er. Nothing but that, baby. An update from the Mullen Center, where Rhode Island led the entire game. Then they missed their free throw to only be up three. You just have to watch out for Charles and Clark. The only guy who could hurt you with the triple. He hits the shot. Never mind the cutaway. The last gas shot doesn't go. They go to overtime, or UMass leads by a point. All right, Chris, we're having the same kind of fun here with Duke leading by three. Here's the first half summary in case you join us late. Blue Devils shooting 64%. But they have seven turnovers. And look at what Clemson has done off the bench. Eight to one in the first meeting. The bench for Clemson outscored that great Duke bench, 44-24. They're one of the rare teams in basketball that can match Duke physically from the bench. They really can match Duke. And they bring an experience where Duke brings in youth. Ricky Price, one of their rare veterans for Duke, has not played well since being academically out early in the year. Miller misses the long three. Allen's back with the, or Weidman with the offensive rebound. They've been waiting for Miller to give him a little Miller time with that three-point shot. Just has not been there this year. He's had knee surgery. With nice head fake. He got Price in the air, and Ricky Price will commit the personal. That's what Witt did so effectively when they beat South Carolina in a big interstate rivalry. As you see Mike K talking to Mr. Price. We're going to watch Witt now get into the lane, and there's that fake. See the great head fake and the ball fake? He gets Price up in the air. Ricky Price has not been Ricky Price. 
you have to feel badly for him. He missed the first part of the season because of academics. You know he wanted to come in as a senior and really make a statement and this is last year. And it just seems sometimes when he gets in the game, he's trying so hard to make something happen. He's probably trying too hard. Well, I think the same applies to Chris Burgess. He tries too hard as well. And you just don't let the game come to you. McLeod, nice fake. Basket counts and the foul on Jamison. I'll tell you, Mike, he has become a star. He is no longer a role player, a little inside, outside. He's become a go-to guy, a very effective guy, both inside and outside. Look at McLeod operating right here. St. Anthony's High School, one of the great high school coaches, Bob Hurley. He's had the ability to play for Bob Hurley, Mike Krzyzewski. There he is in the lane, takes the ball up short. I didn't see the foul, Mike. I didn't see the foul. When people said to Mike Krzyzewski, why would you take a transfer? You have never taken a transfer. Now they know. Yeah, he knew something that a lot of people didn't know. Great kid, just wanted a change of environment. Left St. John's, who, by the way, has really done a great job in their comeback this year with Frannick Fraschella. They'll be in a big dance. Well, you know he's a good kid, or Mike Krzyzewski wouldn't have taken him in the first place, no matter how well he could play. Well, you know, you're in North Carolina, and you're Duke, you can be a little selective in the people you're going to yeah. bring in. It's a matter of who you want to take because they have so many people want to wear their uniform. McIntyre, beautiful movement in the lane with the left hand. He cuts the lead to four. Can't allow him to get into that lane. He gets in that lane. A lot of big things happen, whether he's going to score or dish the ball off. McIntyre has seven. Avery for three. A little bit out of his range right there. Not a good shot by Avery. He was so big against Arizona. 21 points, four for six from three-point range down in Hawaii. McIntyre, great crossover, got away, but Battier was there to help out on defense. They got McLeod, missed him. Avery will try another three. Got this one. See, he had good range, squared his body. That was an excellent shot. Secondary phase in their transition game. Spotted, he spotted really well. The lead is seven. It's so dangerous from three-point land. And you look at Clemson, they've been ineffective this year defending the three. There's McIntyre. The little guy is keeping Clemson in there. He has nine and has cut the lead back to five. He's playing like the 3S man tonight. He's been super simulating successful, just like followers in that studio. Langdon trying to get away from Butner. Nice rebound by Mohamed Rooney. I'll tell you one thing about Avery. He's not afraid to take a shot. No. <laughs> he's not bashful, baby. Christie. Good call. Excellent call. He was riding Christie with his arm. Ricky Price was riding him. Carl Hess with the call. Number two on Price. There he is right here. See, you can't reach out. He was making contact right there. Put the hand in and Hess nails him. Price will go to the bench with his second personal, and Wojciechowski is back in with 4.08 to go in the first half. Like I mentioned earlier, that they don't defend the three really well. In doing research, in their seven losses, they have allowed teams to shoot 56 for 126. That's 44%. You can't allow people to shoot 44% from three. That's like 60%. When you look at a deuce, and there it is compared to their wins. In their wins, they're allowing 23%. But look at their losses. I mean, they're giving people a field day from the trifecta. Christie hit the first free throw. Missed the second one. Well, they're going to let him shoot it from the three-point line. Why don't you just back That's up right. and shoot it from there? Clemson has hit four out of ten from the line. There you see the three-point story. Look at that matchup. They got a mismatch. They got Langdon being played by McIntyre. He should slide inside. Carowell takes it right to the hoop. He's just a quiet player. One of those quiet kids. Statistically, doesn't post a lot of stats, but he's a winner. Chris Carowell is a winner. Carowell has four. The lead back to six. Boy, Witt so comfortable with the ball. Missed that shot. He got bumped. Sometimes he looks so smooth, Dick, you really expect him to get 15 points a game. Especially in transition. Duke's been so effective running their half-court offense. Nice pitch. Langdon, nice dish to Burgess. 
He doesn't want to go to the line. No, Burgess would have loved to have seen that basket go, zip, go in because at the free throw line, it has just been a horror show for him. It's been a disaster. 21 of 65. And if you watch him in practice, he shoots oh, so much better. There's Burgess with that good agility. Psychologically, he is struggling on this line. What's it, less than 30%, Mike? Right now, it's 32.3. That's less than a third. Pretty decent rotation on that one. Yeah, he stayed there. See, in the past, he's been getting a lot of body language, moving his body back. He's been shifting his body. They've been working with him to try and stay there, square to the goal, and get that good rotation. He said, please get that 32% out of here. Don't show that, Mr. Graphics, man. Missed the second one. The good thing about being at 32%, it's easy to get it up in a hurry. <laughs> He's almost embarrassed to go to the line. Well, he hit one out of two. Maybe that'll give him a little boost. He needs his confidence on that line. It's a mental thing. Look at the clock. Give it up. Give it up. Nice pass with a left hand to Carrollwell. Great pass. Great play by McLeod defensively, and then made the good look, had the good vision, and kicked it with the left hand. I tell you, Duke was really focused today at their shoot-around. And I think, really, that reflects their leader. And their assistant coaches really play off him, Snyder and Dawkins and Henderson. It was so great to hear Mike tell me today that he said, you know, people keep throwing my name around in the NBA. I love it where I'm at. He said, and Dick, I'm not sure my personality would fit to the NBA. 33-24, more basketball coming your way on Thursday. Indiana will visit Ohio State starting at 7.30 Eastern. That's followed by Louisville against Marquette. We invite you to join. Well, that is tomorrow, isn't it? This being Wednesday. Indiana, the Hoosiers really playing well right now. I like their style of play. This kid, Wrecker and Dighton, two great young players. Ohio State desperate for a win, any win. Yeah, it's but a long year. And they bailed out Buckner on that one. He was trapped inside. I tell you, Buckner's achieved some big-time numbers here at Clemson. He's only one of three players to go over 1,500 points, 500 rebounds, 200 assists. He's had a phenomenal career here. And he was a kid that wasn't heavily recruited when he came out of Hopkinsville, Kentucky. Already tonight, he has passed Dale Davis for number four all-time on the Clemson scoring list. Missed that free throw. Davis played in 1990 when they won the regular season ACC championship here. They won it under Cliff Ellis. They had Alden Campbell on that team in 1990. What a bunch of rebounders those guys were. Good grief. We've got a timeout. Under three minutes to go, first half. Hey, Mike, we take a look right here with Duke leading against Clemson. Look at Mr. Burgess on the free throw line. We look at his feet. Now we watch very carefully and we see how he's going to back up off his feet rather than as we take a look again. Look at the balls of your feet. See how his feet are going back? He's not a fullback. No, Chris, you got to get on those balls of your feet. See, he's on his heels. He's on his heels going back. You want to go forward and get that rotation. He's 22 for 66 now. Hey, 22 for 66, that's one third. 22 and the 22 is one. And then into 66 is three. That's 33%. He went up to 32. I'm pretty good at math, huh? <laughs> Tell you what, you could give him a run for his money on his free throw. Langdon with a runner. He's got that floating jump shot. Trajan Langdon nails that big three. He's come out strong. He went through a slump period earlier this year. McIntyre. They did a good job containing his penetration in that possession. He's been so effective. There's Wojo trying to get over those screens. You need a lot of help against McIntyre. Miller tries the showboat pass and throws it wide of Weidman. Tough pass, Mike. That was a tough pass to handle. It was thrown so hard. I got a feeling he may come out after that pass. Seven turnovers by the Tigers. They are down by ten. Also got to realize who you're throwing that kind of pass to. You know, they really played well, and that's tough to say when you're down ten, but Duke has shot so well. McLeod, oh, what a great step move. in. What a great move. Has he become a star, or is oh, he just it up? He's been terrific, Mike, no doubt about it. He has certainly had an all-ACC kind of year, although the scoring is so balanced, his numbers don't show it. Nice block by Burgess. He does a great job of sneaking out after the block shot. McLeod for three. 
This will be a foul inside against the Blue Devils, I believe, as Allen's back had a great shot to get the uh, rebound, and Carowell came over the back. Rashawn McLeod going to work on the inside now. See, he's going to step into the lane. He likes it. Now, look at that head fake. What a great fake to freeze the defender to get on the inside. See the head fake and the ball fake? You young kids out there, learn to utilize that head and ball fake and keep that pivot foot down. Allen's back at the line, the first seven-footer that Clemson has had since Tree Rollins, and this young man's going to be a very good player here at Clemson. Yeah, he really is. He's got excellent skills. He's got good touch for a big guy. I'll tell you, you mentioned Tree Rollins. You talk about a rejector and a shot blocker. 1980 might have been the best team Clemson ever had. Our buddy Bill Foster. They went to the final eight when they had Larry Nance. Remember that club in 1980? Oh, sure. Bill now retired, did a great job in many places. was like a Frank Lloyd Wright, an architect, a guy, a builder of programs at Clemson, North Carolina, Charlotte, Miami. Clemson has missed eight out of 14 free throws, and they're down by 11. Avery knocked out of bounds. You know, eight out of 14, but that's just, things don't change, Mike. You don't change. And that's been a nightmare for Rick Barnes. He has tried every method possible to get them to really improve on that line. Twice in the last two years, he's had free throw only practice. And after both of those games, they responded with great free throw shooting nights. This is going to be a foul away from the ball on Butner. Well, maybe you should never have practice, just free throw shooting practice. Well, then the rest of your game goes <laughs> down a drain. He did a great job last year on the line against Duke, in fact. This guy right now, Mr. Barnes, is three and zip against Michael K in Little John. Has not lost here since he's been here as a coach. And Clemson as a team has won four of the last seven in this building against Duke. McLeod at the line, averaging 13 points, five and a half rebounds a game. Well, Mike Kay said today at the shoot-around, he said, we know we're in for a war. This club's back is against the wall. He said, we got to really come out here and compete tonight. And they are competing. Great job by Burgess on the miss. He knew he couldn't get the rebound, but he knew his teammates were back there, and he tipped it back out to them. Well, you got two freshmen going head-to-head. -head. Maybe get some touches to Burgess. Whoa, Joe, nice dish. Burgess missed McLeod with a rebound. Oh, and Allen's back just tomahawk. Oh, you don't want to put him on the line. This kid's got great touch. They're letting this game start to slide away from him, Mike. You don't want to go into halftime where you're down 14 or 15. So psychologically now, you're trying to get this to single digits. The first meeting in Durham, Duke led by 16 at the half, eventually built that to 24. But Clemson, not the outside shooting kind of team that normally you'd expect to make a big comeback. I'll tell you, they were down 22. If people don't realize, I remember writing it down. With 11 minutes and 45 seconds to go in that game, came back, had the ball with two seconds to go, and a shot at the foul line, and then off the offensive rebound with a chance to win. Duke was like a fighter on the ropes, just praying, who was leading and praying for that clock to come to an end. Would have been the best comeback in ACC history had they pulled it off. And certainly, I, I think watching that game, I would have agreed with you. They didn't have a chance. Exactly. But somebody didn't tell them. Exactly. The best comeback was the Virginia comeback over Duke when Peter Gaudet was on that sideline. That year, Mike was out. They were up 23 and came back and beat Duke. And also, uh, the next best one, you and I did the game, <laughs> That's right. was for uh, North Carolina, Maryland, 22 down. Came back and beat North Carolina. At Chapel Hill. Wow. Since then, they have not gotten into the L column too often. No. The lead is now 13. Clemson really needs a bucket. Butner. They've done a great job on Butner. They have really contained him, and that's why they got the lead. Nobody back. Look at the big guy. What a pass, and that may be an intentional foul, although Allen Spack got close to the ball, and they're probably not going to call it. Yeah, what he, an outlet by Wojo. He went for the ball, but again, if you're going to take a chance with Burgess, you'd rather put him on the line. They have done a great job containing Butner. Right here, look at him contain Batty A, challenging him, hustling on the floor. And there's the kick out to Burgess. Kid from out of California. And there's the contact. He gets now it to he's two out of three. He's got to stay on the line now. He's got to stay on that line, get on the balls of his feet, and go forward with his body. Three out of four will do him really wonder. Don't fall back. He fell back just slightly that time. But hit two out of four. Free throw shooting is a rhythm. Is a timing and a rhythm. 
And Duke's going to a little zone right here. Look at this here. Duke's going to make him shoot the perimeter shot. You don't see Duke or zone very often. They go to a 2-3 zone. I'm shocked. Look at this. Christie for three. Burgess, who's had a sensational first half, has the rebound. That was a great rebound by Burgess. A big-time rebound. McLeod, 14 points. He's hit five out of eight. And as Dick said, Buckner has been under control, held down by that Duke defense. Coming up, the Courtyard by Marriott halftime report with Chris Fowler. Our score, 40-26. Let's join Chris. ESPN's presentation of NCAA basketball is brought to you by Mercury. Go ahead, imagine yourself in a Mercury. Duke brings that defensive intensity every single night. Tonight they lead by 14 at Clemson, a place they have lost three games in a row to the Tigers. But tonight, off to a much better start. We mentioned at the beginning of the telecast for Sean McLeod and Buckner for Clemson, and it has been a tale of uh, one going one way, one going the other in the first half. Well, Mike, we talked about how McLeod is trying to give them post presence on the inside, something they lacked when they lost their and Brand, and he's really done that effectively here. He's been so effective taking the ball to the basket. Now we watch him operate in the lane. There's the great ball fake. There's the slide, the glide, and the little touch on the inside. On the other side, Buckner's been very stationary. See, he's not moving right now to utilize screens. Carroll checking him down. They've been rotating different bodies on him. They've been changing, putting a lot of people on him. Now we're going to watch Buckner standing here on the baseline. going to try to jump stop and get into the lane, but he's challenged by the big people and really struggled in the first half. Buckner with only four points, hitting a single field goal and one rebound. He's a tremendous rebounder, while McLeod already has more than his season's average 15 points and four boards for the Blue Devils, and Duke will get the ball as we start the second half. I think what you said so accurately to start the half here about the intensity of Duke. They always come to play with a passion and an intense feeling. And it might always be effective, but they'll always play hard. Wojo with the travel. And that starts with the guy on the sideline, who at one time in 75 was on a coaching staff at Indiana. In fact, Mr. Buckner was there, and one of my favorite point guards I've ever watched play because he understood how to play the game, Quinn Buckner. But the bottom line on that staff, they had Dave Bliss, Bob Donnell, Bob Weltlick, all outstanding head coaches. What a staff they had. They would have won back-to-back -back national titles if Scotty May didn't get hurt. Buckner. Comes up short on that jumper. One field goal so far in the ballgame. See, he's got to watch out if not trying to carry the club too quickly and take some bad shots. they got to play this game in spurts. Try to get this to about seven or eight with about four minutes gone and a half. McLeod with a defender in his face. Missed it all together. And where's McLeod Mr. Jameson? will let him hear it. Mike, where's Mr. Jameson been? The big physical strong guy. He seems to get things done in short spurts, and you don't hear from him for a while. The Turbe leans in, travel. Really struggling offensively, and that's that team defense of Duke. Eight turnovers for the Clemson Tigers. Take a look right there. You shoot 33% from the field, and you shoot less than 50% from the free throw line. You got no shot to win when you're shooting. Look at this. No field goals in the last 433. A credit again to that effective team defense of Duke, that man-to-man -man defense. Trajan Langdon, here's a foul away from the ball. It's going to be on McLeod, his second. An illegal screen. They put a clinic on defensively against Wake Forest. Held them to 47 in their recent blowout, Duke. There's that trying to run a little double screen. There's the bump right here and a push off by McLeod. Well officiated game. Frank Scagliata, Steve Gordon, and Carl Hess, the crew tonight. I'm glad you said that. Freddie Barricat's crew has done an outstanding job here tonight. Butner, yeah. He took that to the goal strong, hanging and sliding in the lane. See, when he scores like that, and he plays like that, when Buckner says, hey, that's my younger brother. But when he plays poorly, he says, I don't know the guy. We just got similar names. Carrollwell got by him, and Jamison has the rebound for the Tigers. See, Jamison has got to get tough inside. He's got to want the ball. He's so strong. You should have seen him dominate against South Carolina. The lead is 12. 
Well, Jahowski called for his second personal. He had 11 offensive rebounds against South Carolina. We're going to see Buckner right now. Gets a triple threat position. Now they try to seal off, but Turbin gives him a screen, and then he hangs. Remember that great dunk he had? You did the game in the ACC tournament against North Carolina two years ago. Got him in the NCAA tournament. This one's blocked inside. Great defense by Carowell. Yeah, they still call that the dunk. That was amazing. Jameis, the little jump hook, got the roll. That's what they got to get. The big fella inside. Got to bring them to rock in the lane. And the big fella's got to use that body. Oh, little John is waking up right now. Here comes the little John. People starting to wake up here at Clemson. They've cut it to 10. McLeod wants the ball every time they need a basket to shut down the momentum. Langdon fouled on the way in. You don't want to put him on the line. Here's Harold Jamison stepping up now, a big physical body with those great guns. There he is, the little jump hook in the lane. They work on that every day in practice. Little jump hooks in the lane with the assistant, Dennis Felton. Outstanding assistant. In fact, one of their assistants from last year. Remember Larry Shiat? What a job yep. he's doing at Wyoming. Had a big win over Utah, big win over New Mexico. Buckner gets a breather. Carowella Wojciechowski for three. Vincent Witt with a rebound. Witt really moves like a gazelle. Yeah, he's so smooth. He slides. This game is far from over, Mike. You almost could smell a run going to happen by Clemson. McIntyre, tough pass, retrieved his own miss. Caught in the lane, forced that one. Yeah, that's a bad shot. They're having a tough time executing their half-court offense. They got to hope to get some transition baskets, which they're getting none of, and Rick Barnes right there, frustrated with that possession. So we said earlier, Rick Barnes going for his 200th coaching win. Mike Krzyzewski going for number 497 tonight. They only need combination of Army and Duke. He's only four more to get into that magical 500 mark. Avery in at the point to Langdon as they spread the floor a little bit. McLeod with a pull-up jumper over Jamison. By that time, he shot it over Weidman. Weidman. Weidman, big Weidman trying to check him. Not quick enough to come outside to check him. He'd go right by him, so he gave him the three-point shot. What a sweet stroke. McLeod with 17. But also good basketball IQ right there, Mike. He knew that Weidman would not come out and challenge him, so he shot the open three. Wojciechowski bothering McIntyre. Missed the shot. McLeod with a rebound. I tell McLeod's making one heck of a run to be an all-ACC player. And let me tell you, that is an elite five to make. If you can make the top five in this league, you play anywhere. Wojo for three. A lot of time to think about it, and he drained it. There's the lethal three again. So effective all year long for Duke. Last year, they made 279 to break a school record. Wojciechowski has eight, and all of a sudden, the lead balloons to 15. And that's the three-point shot. Jamison backing in, a little jump hook again. Jamison with a tremendous performance tonight. He has nine. Normally, they only get nine points a game out of him. Jamison trying to lock up inside. I looked at that body and the stature of that guy, and it's hard to believe he'll average nine a game. I really mean that. He's so tough inside. Langdon cuts down the lane. Jamison is there. No 14 foul. on the shot clock. Great block by Jamison, but Duke gets the ball back. Duke with five block shots tonight. Shot clock at five. Wojo has to unload. Knocked out of bounds. Trajan Langdon may have gotten away with a foul against Weidman. Langdon had 34 last year against Clemson when they clinched the ACC regular season title. Here's the little guy, Wojo. He steps it up. He said, nothing but no more, baby. Nebraska and Missouri in overtime. Albert White, the chance to win it with the lay-in. Doesn't go. Kelly Thame, the putback. It doesn't go. It comes back out to D.B. Ray. One more chance. Nebraska-Missouri played an overtime thriller in football. Both basketball games went to overtime. Yes? Yeah, but not the same kind of controversies they had in football. 
45-32, Duke by 13. Rashawn McLeod has been the difference, Dick. I tell you, he's been so versatile. Look at the breakdown where he's scoring from. He's in the paint. He's from the perimeter. He's from the three-point line, the free-throw line. He's so multidimensional, and he's given him that post presence, which Mike really wanted to establish because of the fact that we're getting away from that, shooting exclusively threes. They now have that good post presence with him inside. 45-32, when Jameson come out to set a screen, he sets a screen. Christie, great reverse. Nice drive by Christie, but a poor job defensively by Duke. Nobody stepped over to close off his driving angle. The lead cut back to 11. I think you just feel that there's going to be a spurt, that this club is too talented not to make a little run, especially at home. Avery against Miller. Dumps it to Battier. Avery and Wojciechowski in there together, and we've got a foul on the shot as Miller commits the person. You think playing in a state of urgency right now, as you look at Christie in triple threat position, he could shoot, drive, or pass. He drives very slow, Duke rotating over to give any help, and he gets that reverse layup from out of Hartford, Connecticut. Hey, you talk about great crowds. We said the crowd was alive here. Your area, Morgantown, West Virginia, was the best crowd I've seen all year as he converts on the line, Avery. The second best crowd I've seen was that Carolina crowd. It was electricity. It wasn't wine and cheese, as Mr. Cassell no, no. called it. And the third best was Indiana and Purdue was so special. But I think when it's all said and done, February 28th, when the Cameron Crazies go bananas, that place will be unbelievable down there when Carolina comes up the road. Avery misses the free throw. Buckner with a rebound. Yeah, I think that'll be the best crowd of the year. I don't have any doubt about it. Well, whether it's football or basketball, West Virginia fans uh, know how to yell, don't they? Oh, they do. They're going to get a big dance this year. Kiel, Kiel Catlett's club has earned that right. Christie pull up three. Got it. They need that three. And again, he gets that because of the drive in a previous possession. They play off him. He's trying to pump this crowd. Christie has nine, and we've got a ball game. This crowd wants to get in it so badly, but they need a little help from their friends on the court. Buckner is on McLeod. That's not a good matchup. He's going to try to post them inside. Oh, that's, he got away with one there. Wow. Boy, he really hacked at that basketball, knocked it out of bounds with 11 on the shot clock. See, Christie stares at him. He says, wait a minute, don't you understand that I'm the second-best three-point shooter in the league? Don't you understand that? you got to check me. And there's Buckner now playing against McLeod, giving some size. As soon as you do that, usually the whistle is blown. Wow. Avery for three. He's not shy. Not shy at all. He's like I am. I'm an introvert. I'm shy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's not shy You're at right. all. You're right. He's shy like you are. 13-15 <laughs> to go from Little John. Got Battier now checking Buckner. Battier showing his versatility defensively. Play big people. Play wing people. Mike Krzyzewski said to me today, he will be the best defender Duke has ever, ever had. Jamison pushed by McLeod. That's three on Rashawn McLeod. That's big. He's got to take him out for a minute or two. Burgess, who had a good first half, comes back in, and Battier will sit down. He's very active, Burgess. He really is. He's just got to get some confidence in his offensive game. Nice inbounds to Butler. He is clobbered. And guess who gets the foul? Rashawn McLeod. It's his fourth. And that is a big play. A big play offensively and a big play in the fact that he gets number four. What a great job executing in special situations. They set the screen. Do a great job. And there is Buckner with the conversion. They isolate him. And McLeod nails him to the deck. He's got to go to the sideline. And the crowd is alive. McLeod went to sleep and tried to recover and commits his fourth. Butner will go to the line. You almost expected them to come back, Mike, and make this interesting. Their back is against the wall. They're 5 and 7. They're 15 and 10. They've been embarrassed this year. They've been humiliated. They were top five in America preseason. This crowd wants the big dance. They don't want the NIT, baby. Duke with a 20-second timeout, and Dick, you know guys like Butner believe they can beat Duke because they've done it three times in a row here. Well, they expected to win when they went over to Duke. They were so disappointed. 
wanted to do that locker room after their great comeback. They didn't take it like a moral victory that we played them so tough. I'll tell you, how was my guest at that game? Alex Rodriguez, the great baseball player. He had the thrill of a lifetime. He said he had so much fun. I, I really wish that every fan out there, as we look here at the comparison, first half and second half field goal turnovers, the bottom line is I wish every fan could enjoy a game. Cameron Indoor Stadium. If you're truly a basketball fan, it is one unbelievable experience. Langdon had it blocked, but a foul. It's going to be on Miller, not Jamison, the man who blocked the shot. Yeah, and that really is a costly foul because this stops momentum because before he even goes to the line, Mike, I'm taking your pencil and I'm putting two in a book because he's automatic. He's the number one free throw shooter in the conference, 91%. You heard me right, 91%. Put it down, Mike. Put it down. Come on, don't waste time. Get it in there. He has hit 73 of 80 this year. Don't waste time. Get it down again. Come on, put it it's down. It. Come on, Warner, put it down. He has now hit 25 in a row, 38 of his last 39. Wow. He shoots it just like Fowler sh shot it when he played for the intramural team down in Colorado. He played on the intramural team. He can't challenge Buckner in that studio on the line. The lead is eight. He's automatic. It's so great when you've got kids on a perimeter who are going to have the ball, and you know they can execute on that line. You know Rick Barnes is jealous. Christie. Offensive foul. They stepped over and cut the lane off that time in a previous drive that he made. They did not do that. Rick Barnes, good-looking guy, working that sideline at one time, was on a staff at Ohio State with Franny Frischella when he worked with Gary Williams. What a staff that was. Sure was. Battier took the last charge. He leads the Blue Devils in charges taken. Usually, it's a it's a real quick forward, but he's done a great job at center. And he also leads them in rebound. You don't see him statistically with numbers offensively. Langdon, Big. beautiful move. Drove the defense toward the lane and then pulled up. But isn't that what a star is supposed to do? You're on the road. You're struggling. One of your key people goes out with four, and Trajan Langdon responds like an all-ACC performer. Langdon has half a dozen. What a block. Carowell. Oh, man. Carowell just reached up on the top of the ball and then took it away. They got so many people who understand their roles. Guys that, if you look at Wojciechowski here, he knows the role of a point guard. Carowell knows he's a defender and gives him scoring on the baseline. Langley, the perimeter player. Foul away from the ball on Butner. That'll be his third. And, Dick, when you talk about execution, would you expect anything less from a Mike Krzyzewski team? Especially with a team that really has a nice combination of experience plus youth. 11.38 to go in the ball game. Duke has regained a 10-point lead. Trajan Langdon with the big bucket that made it double digits. Duke with a 10-point lead here in the second half at Clemson, 50-40. to 40. Let's go ahead and use the phrase before we beat it to death in the next month. <laughs> on Clemson the is bubble. on the bubble. 15-10 oh. and 10 overall, two games under 500 in the ACC. They have fallen to fifth because Georgia Tech won tonight, moved to 6-7. and seven. Two and four against ranked teams. In the RPI, they're 31st. The biggest wins they've had this year, Maryland and South Carolina, some outstanding losses. Gonzaga and NC State are the ones that Rick Barnes would like to have back. And he felt they really got uh, jobbed out of that NC State game. Well, he did. I mean, there was no doubt when Harrison made that free throw, missed the free throw, and then made it on the shot when he went over the line and he cleared out Buckner. Forced the game to overtime. It's five-second violation right there. Nice defense by McIntyre. And what does Clemson have left this year? Take a look at the remaining games. They're at Virginia. We'll have that on ACC, on ABC, rather, on Saturday at NC State. And then they got Georgia Tech coming up at home. They got to win at least two of those three games and maybe the first round of the ACC tournament. They got to at least be seven and nine. Six and ten, I don't believe, will get it in a conference, no matter what your RPI rating is. Who, by the way, their rating was a little higher than 31 now because they had a win Sunday, and that doesn't count in the current RPI ratings. They close on Saturday night. 
Carowell with a good pick. That's 11 turnovers against the Tigers. And they blew out Florida State on a Sunday. Langdon, good head fake to get free, then leans in on a tough shot. He'll go to the line for wow. two rather automatic wow. free throws. Mike would love to see him on the line all day. My VBDI, my Vital Ball Dome Index, has them about 25 RPI. Look at Michael K working that sideline. Great interview yesterday with Chris Myers on Up Close. He is a very bright, interesting guy. He has that persona on the sideline, of course, during games as being a very harsh-looking coach, but he's anything but. He's, yep. he's a terrific person. Well, he's got great compassion. I know John Saunders, myself, and Mike are co-chairman yearly for the Jimmy V Classic, and his involvement is so unique and so special, and he's so close to Jimmy, and Jimmy's passing at the end, and just a special guy. Langdon hits another free it's throw. It's automatic. Back to a dozen. It's automatic. I mean, you put him on the line, just give him a deuce. Don't waste time. Move the game up so we can get to the hotel and get out of here. Well, the upset is when the ball actually touches the rim. Jeez, he what a matter. Great touch. Now he's challenging Christie. He's not going to let him shoot the three. Knocked away by Burgess. Weidman gets it back. See, Burgess very quick defensively. Plays the passing lane really well. Reach-around foul call on Battier. I'm sure he's looking forward to UCLA on Sunday. What a great intersectional match that is, UCLA and Duke on Sunday on ABC. I can't wait for that matchup. Look at Battier now working on the inside. Very active, Battier. See him playing the three-second area? But he's going to try to post and use that, trying to use that good reach to try and step in that lane. But they had Buckner and he missed him. 10.31 to go in the game. Out of bounds off the Blue Devils. Very rare you get those great intersectional matchups during the heart of the season. But it's really great. The kids look forward to it because you get a chance to play against someone that doesn't know what your tendencies. I mean, in this league, they know everything one of these players are going to do. Well, that's exactly right. It's a little uh, refreshing for these kids to step out of conference. And the same for UCLA. Miller with a runner. The follow is Jameson. good. Jameson working the offensive boards. He was a terror against South Carolina. They played that game without McIntyre and got that big win over a good South Carolina team that lost tonight to Arkansas. Jameson has 11. McIntyre dogging Wojciechowski as Duke spreads the floor. Wojo got it to the baseline. This one's not. Oh, great oh, hustle. What wow. great hustle there by Burgess. Great, great hustle. Burgess really improving his stock tonight. He's given them some good defense, gotten a couple of points, a few rebounds, and all that hustle. And he's playing so hard. Typical life in the ACC. I mean, you talk about great hustle and great strapping and intensity. That's life in this league. Butner with Carowell on him. Trying to run that baseline screen, step away after the screen. Weidman with a rare shot, and it goes in. Tom Weidman only usually takes two shots an entire game. I'll tell you, if we're not a Marietta, Georgia, he stepped very nicely away from the screen and had the wide open shot. The most dangerous guy is the screener. People have a tendency to relax against the screener. Carowell lost the ball on the way in. Weidman picks it up. Plenty of time. This club is so dangerous. And won three in a row. Jameson. He's fouled. Not a bad foul, though. Jameson, they'd love to put on a free throw line. He struggles on that line. That's the difference. And Rick Barnes knows that right now. There's Jameson working on the inside. Gets that good post position. Now he's going to wheel in the lane. Got to get good spacing out there as he dumps the ball inside. They've really contained the penetration of McIntyre. Jamison, only a 50% shooter, and that one barely touched the front of the rim. He's now one out of two from the line. Well, think about the difference now. Langdon goes down the other end, nails four in a row. Now you come up here, you execute, the guy goes to the line, and you come up empty. And you're hoping and praying for maybe one. I firmly believe if you can still dress yourself and you practice, you can be a 65% free throw shooter. Well, I think so. You know, I got one eye a ball. You saw me uh, electrify this crowd here tonight shooting free throws. I mean, come on now, Mike. I was out there drilling them in my short and well, that last one was ugly. I don't know if you electrified it, Nick, <laughs> but I, I will admit you probably did shoot around 65. <laughs> Weidman gets uh, his second personal. 
and I'm 58, bald, one eye, got a shirt and tie on, got no ability, ugly as can be. Hey, there's a couple other things wrong with you, too, but you shot 65%. Uh, let's, let's give you that. Well, I'll tell you, you don't have enough time to go on <laughs> with all the things that are wrong with me. No, you're my buddy. We've been at this a long time. A long time, and you better stay at ESPN. <laughs> and there's McLeod missing that one right there. I'm going to get involved in your negotiations. That's all I need. <laughs> 8.45 to go in the ball game. Man-to-man -man defense, no secret. There's Duke playing the passing lanes, pressuring the ball. Boy, as soon as Witt picked up his dribble, Trajan Langdon was all over it. Miller, tough shot. Jameson tried to keep it alive. McLeod's back in there. And here's the foul in the backcourt. Who picks it up? McIntyre or Miller? And they just sprint up the court, Duke. They do Miller. their job, sprint up the court. There's Jameson trying to battle inside, trying to battle, trying to get inside position, using that big frame of his. Four fouls on Miller. He'll have to come out and Buckner checks back in. And things are only going to get better for Duke. Think about what they add to this club next year. They add Elton Brand, they add Nate James, and a kid by the name of Corey McGetty, who's been sensational for Fenwick High School. In fact, he just had a shootout with a kid at Whitney Young High School by the name of Quentin Richardson, who'll be going to, if you look at Elton Brand, they think he'll dress on Sunday. I was here for the personal workout today with Quinn Snyder, and I can tell you this, my friends, if you're a Duke fan, you would have liked what you had seen. He missed one! He missed one! I got a scoop! He only went five to six. He broke his string. How many in a row do you have, Mike? Five out of six. Wow. That made it five out uh, of six. He had been 29 in a row, and that one slipped and it looked like a turbag on it. The turbag's going to get credit for it, but I got a crazy feeling the cloud might have took it. It looked like it. And here comes the crowd again. Oh, and they're rising. Seven points with eight minutes to go. Plenty of time. There is zone now. McIntyre got a hand on it with 19 seconds on the shot clock. That zone could be dangerous with Langdon and Avery. 7.54 to go in the game from Clemson. Back in a moment. Clemson, and here is the storyline from Little John Coliseum. The Blue Devils shooting better than 51%. They've missed only six shots at the free throw line. McLeod with a gorgeous performance. Clemson has missed 10 free throws. They're down by seven. Buckner averaging 16 and a half points a game has only nine on three out of nine shooting so far. Well, as we talked about earlier, Mike, five ACC losses by less than five points, and they shot 62% in those games from the free throw line shooting 60% as a team. Today, less than 50%, and you're only down seven. Think about what a disaster that is. Duke playing a three-guard lineup right now with Avery, Wojciechowski, and Langdon against this zone. Wojo for three. Shot that too quickly right there. Shot that too quickly. Jamison with another board. They got to get some looks for Chappelle at that three-point line. Jamison with six rebounds in this game. Witt spins into the lane, missed the shot. Wojciechowski with a foul. Good execution right there by Vincent Witt. But then now we talk again about the free throw line, special situation, converting here a must. Instead of Wojciechowski, they'll give it to Trajan Langdon, his second. Vincent Witt at the line, highly recruited out of Greensboro. 7 for 18. Free throw. Played high school basketball with Brendan Haywood, who's really improving that in North Carolina. Can't keep missing these. I mean, already, you hate to keep harping on it, but they're 7 for 18. 7 for 18. And they are right about at their average, which is the worst in the ACC. They've had so many close games. But when you play at this level, Dick, not only in this conference, but the out-of-conference teams they've played, if you don't miss free throws, you are going to lose the close games. Exactly. Execution now becomes big for Duke because they're stepping it up defensively, Clemson, in their half-court game. McLeod in there with four personal fouls. So you'd like to get some dribble penetration out of Langdon and use that a 
ability he has to get fouled when he makes that move to the goal with that pump fake. See, there it is. Leaner from the free throw line. Jamison with another rebound, then knocked away, saved by a turbe. Foul the right foul's going to be on Battier as he cut his legs out from under him. Two on Battier, and a turbe is holding that already strapped right knee. His brother plays for George Washington, where Mike Jarvis has a really solid club. That Atlantic 10 this year is really unbelievable. Every game is a battle, like tonight, Massachusetts, Rhode Island. I mean, you look at Xavier, you look at Temple, George Washington, Dayton's had a good year, even though they lost tonight. That conference, hey, he takes it on his legs right there, diving on the floor. I tell you, it's getting interesting now, down to six, going to the line, and psychologically, if they ever needed a win, a big win, to feel good about themselves, they need that here today at home. They are 15 and 10 overall. Aturbe has had real injury problems at Clemson, had to sit out all of 95, had very uh, serious condition with blood clots in his shoulder that required surgery. He was a great, great player in a game against Kentucky last year. He took Kentucky's pressure apart. The opening game we had on ESPN is passing ability. Muhammad Wooney will shoot the free throws for him as he comes into the lineup. Hits the first one. He's only 59%. He made 10 for 11 against Minnesota in the NCAA tournament last year in that big battle. And then Minnesota went on to beat UCLA to go to the Final Four with Bobby Jackson and company. Hits, Hits it above. And look at this. A four-point game. Wow. And these fans, we said we thought they'd make a little run. They wouldn't go away. You could almost feel it. They were playing good, solid defense. McLeod against Jameson. He wants to take the big shot. You look for McLeod to be a guy that wants to take the big shot. Dior Langdon. Dior Langdon will step up. Nine on the shot clock. McIntyre's done a good job against Wojo. Langdon, three on the shot clock. He's tied up, nearly lost it. And they'll call a foul on Christie oh, with one oh, second on the shot clock. Oh, and not only one second, you're 35 feet from the goal, and he's got his back to the basket. Not a good play right there by Tony Christie. Not a good play at all as the clock is winding down, winding down. As soon as you reach in a bump like that, you're going to blow the whistle. And look who goes to the line. Look who goes to the line. All Christie had to do was be aware of that situation and let the ball go, but you understand he's fighting so hard to get it back. Oh, yeah, you're not going to knock the effort, but you got to be able to think and understand sure. time and score. Time and score is so important. So many players don't think about time and score as he just drills two more. Seven out of eight for Trajan Langdon. He has 11. If this game is won, it's going to be because of Langdon's free throw shooting ability and the ineptness of Clemson on a free throw line. Oh, what a great move. Muhammad Rooney. Rooney with a great up and under move right there. Great head fake. Tremendous low post play right there. He has six off the bench. It's cut to four again. McIntyre trying to keep the ball away from Wojciechowski. Carrollwell, great pass to McLeod, but the block by Buckner and then the foul. Boy, the crowd thought he got all ball. In fact, here comes some debris out on the court. Yeah, you don't need that. That's a no-no in sports. You don't help anybody. There's Mohamed Woney down inside. Now he's going to show some good fakes. Oh, he does a great job faking to get free for that. Hells his pivot foot. And now we're going to watch the defense down in this end. And they get the foul on McLeod. So look at Woney right here, giving him some positive minutes. He said that Clemson's the one team that can certainly match Duke on the bench for product productivity. He's going to warn the crowd here. They'll pull a technical on the crowd. They are telling the crowd not to throw anything on the court. What the crowd amazingly never seems to understand is they can injure their own players, which is just witless. And Clemson's bench, as they did in the first game, outscoring Duke's bench. Three to one ratio here tonight. You notice the minutes in, in the real competitive big time games Duke faces goes up big time for guys like Langdon, Wojciechowski, McLeod, the Carowells. The minutes start to really increase. He's pleading now. And now he's pleading. He's making like a Johnny Cochran on that. Front. He's making like a lawyer. He's pleading. He's come on, guys. We're going to win this game on a road. 
Duke with a six-point advantage at the free throw line. Only five in the game. McLeod hits them both. Taking free throws down the stretch. That could be the major difference when you look at the ultimate result of this big contest. McIntyre, a little pull-up jump shot. Didn't get the roll. He short-armed it. He couldn't believe he was that open. Jamison commits the foul underneath, going for the offensive rebound. That's his third. Max Gagliotta talking to Rick Barnes. Took some heat after that game with North Carolina for his conversation with Okalaja. But I'll tell you this, the next day he called up, he talked to Bill Guthridge, and he asked to talk to the young man, and he said, I'm flat out sorry for saying or doing or acting the way I did. So you got to credit a guy for, in the heat of emotion, this, this league is an unbelievable pressure cooker. I don't know why you want to coach in this league. Every night is a war. Battier hits the free throw. He's a 73% shooter. They keep making those free throws. Battier, here's a guy who's 6'8", who has a 39-inch vertical jump. There's Battier with two big ones right there. Not a freshman any longer, Mike, when you get to this time of the year. The lead is back to eight. It had been cut to four a couple of times. They need a score right here. They need a score. This is a big possession. Miller, tough shot. Oh. Kept alive by Wooney. And Wooney is fouled. out of the game. Gone. He's out of the game. That's five on Rashad McLeod. That is big. You better watch out. Don't say that he get a teeth. Rashawn McLeod fouls out of the ballgame with 5.27 to go. 19 points, 6 rebounds. Tremendous effort by McLeod. And gave him great post presence on the inside. That's a big loss for Duke now. Down the stretch of this game when you get to winning time. Watch McLeod. He's number four. He's trying to work on the offensive boards. And there's Wooney going to go up, and they get him for a grab. I don't know. Whoa. Dick, that Duke, off, uh, Duke defense, rather, forces so many bad shots by the opposition. Miller's was off balance. Well, they do a great job pressuring the ball and always giving help to one another. Duke with a nine-point advantage at the line, even though they've had only six more shots. Wooney's hit two out of two, make it three out of three. He has done better at the line in ACC games as the season has worn along. See, that becomes contagious. I really do. Psychologically, when guys are missing, it starts to become so contagious. Two people. He's been very effective. Now he's on the baseline with a trap using his great size. Dangerous pass there. Miller nearly got there defensively. Duke needs an answer right now. Try and quiet this crowd down. I've only had one field goal in the last three and a half minutes. It's the free throws that have kept them in it. Carowell comes up short. Battier with a follow. It rims out. Rooney had the rebound. Battier took it away. Miller steals it back. They've only had one. I said three and a half. I meant ten and a half. Ten and a half. What a oh, hole. Oh, little dipsy doo Dr. Roos. Slam jump up. And the world are going lucky here, baby. Jameson had 13, and Miller hit him with a bullet. Krzyzewski, and remember, without Rashad McLeod, this could be big. Coming down the stretch. Oh, do they need this win? The 200 for Mr. Barnes, but more than that, they're sixth in the ACC. Look at Miller with the great look inside. He drives it in, and he's going to finish it off with a little slam jam man, the muscle man. He can finish, baby, with those guns. He belongs on a beach in Venice pumping some iron. Mike Krzyzewski wants the timeout, and slow motion did not do that Johnny Miller pass justice. That thing had some heat on it. Yeah, it really did. It looked like an old Ryan Fastball. They're blocking it up defensively. Duke has not been able to get the ball through the net. They've been living off that free throw line. Clemson has cut it to four on three different occasions. They haven't been able to get closer. Wooney with the foul on the drive. That'll be three on Muhammad Wooney. They have really living scoring-wise, Duke, completely on the free throw line. Well, if you play Clemson, you better be able to make free throws. 
This would be a big win for Clemson. Then they got the matchup with Virginia on Saturday, who when you look on paper, they should beat. They beat the first time, but you never know. Life on the road in the ACC as Battier misses one. You know what I feel bad about mentioning Virginia? I hear Jeff Jones maybe getting the ax this year. What a shame. He's been a brilliant coach down there. Unfortunately for him, some players got into problems, and it always comes back on the coach when these youngsters have to look in the mirror and be accountable, just like Quinn Buckner said today about the team, please. I couldn't agree more. you got to be accountable for your actions. Dick, the other ACC coaches have really come to Jeff Jones' defense. They said, these were bad kids because we came after them, too. Outstanding. I mean, Mike Avery, and Avery will be called for the foul. Thought he had the steal. That's only one on the freshman from Augusta. The lead is now five. It's five, and you go to the line here with Johnny Miller, who you would normally think would be a good shooter. He's had a tough time this year shooting the three. They came here thinking he'd be their perimeter shooter. But mentioning Jones again, Mike Krzyzewski said to me today, outstanding. And you look at his first six years at Virginia, they've been super. But sometimes a change of venues is good for everybody, for him and someone else. And I would recommend him anywhere. Miller now two out of three at the line. The transfer from Temple. He's shooting 60% on the line. He should be a better than a 60% shooter with that stroke. Hits them both. Now they cut it to three with 4.12 to go. Full court pressure. Duke has to call a timeout. They couldn't get it inbound. Duke is reeling right now. But the difference in reeling right now versus the first time is there's 4.12 on the clock. When they were reeling the last time, it was under a minute when they had that big lead. This time, they could be really smelling big-time trouble here in Little John. 4.12 left from Clemson. We'll be back in a moment. Four twelve to go and an upset brewing. Duke by three over Clemson. And once again, it has been the Tiger bench. Tonight, they've outscored Duke 31 to 7. Up in Durham, they outscored them 44 to 24. And they've out-rebounded them both times. That is quite an effort from these kids off the bench. Well, you look 31 to 13 off the glass for Clemson, 7 and only 6. Duke is averaging for the year 34 points and 16 rebounds off the bench. But not in the two games against Clemson, who matches them physically. Lojo barely got away from the trap. Battier, Clemson really turning up the screws on defense. They need a big deuce out of someone. It's been a long time since they have scored from a field goal range. They have hit only three field goals the entire half. Langdon, oh, they what? get four and was that huge. What a big basket by Trajan Langdon, who had his big game last year against Clemson, 34, to clinch the ACC regular season title. He made some big shots when they were on the ropes against Virginia, as Virginia as well. Langdon will be the go-to guy with McLeod fouled out of the ball game. Miller misses a three badly out of the corner. What a special basket by Langdon, unbelievable. They needed it so badly, not afraid to take the big shot. The Alaskan assassin really puts the hurt to the Clemson run. And he got the crowd out of it in a hurry. They'll be back in a second, though. Now they're going to their managing the clock offense where their foul line extended, looking for some backdoor clocks, looking for some one-on-one -on -one drive. Shot clock at eight. It's up to Langdon again. Tries to drive this time, kicks it out to Avery. Jamison and Carowell bump, and Carowell knocked it out of bounds. Take a look at Trajan Langdon squaring his body, and it's nothing but nylon. NBN tickles the twine. There it is. And look at the bench. Great reaction. McLeod. They're saying, come on, Rashad, we need you on the floor. We can't have you on the sideline fouling out. We got enough assistant coaches here. We got Dawkins, Henderson, Snyder. I don't need you. I want you on the floor, is Michael K saying. Margin is back to six. Christie trying to get away from Langdon. This is Jamison. Nice double clutch. Well, he did a great job holding post position. I watch him play, and I watch Andre Patterson play at Indiana, and it's hard for me to believe those guys average 9 and 10 points a game. Harold Jamison has 15 tonight and eight boards. Managing the clock. Time and score so important. Langdon got it down low. The kick to Avery. Stripped on the way up. Miller goes to the floor. Nice job to get it to McIntyre. He's where he's so effective. He's Three where he's effective. That's where he's effective. Count it, baby. Count it, AJ. 
Rush up with joy on the sideline. Oh, the jubilation, baby. College basketball, ACC. Excitement, enthusiasm, energy. The foul on Wojciechowski was his third. Oh, what a way to make a living. There's Mr. McIntyre. He's like a giant with the rockets in his hands in transition. And there's Buckner finishing. Buckner is so strong. It's so difficult to get the ball away from him, even on a play like that. He makes the three-point shot, and it's 63-62. Mike Krzyzewski wants to talk about it. Clemson just keeps fighting back, but so far, Dick, Duke has had an answer every time they've been within striking range. They keep coming and clawing and clawing and clawing. They've been doing that since they've been 13 down. Coming up on Sports Center, Dan Patrick and Kenny Main will be along to talk about some big NBA trades, NFL signings. It's that time of year as well. And Bernie Williams signs. What kind of dollars astronomical you can bet. I want to get 10% of his action, but also an ACC guy, Kenny Anderson, goes over to Boston with Rick Pitino. But when we look at this situation here, and if you're Duke, you're trying in this execution to get the ball in the hands of Trajan Langdon, hoping at worst that he gets fouled. They're looking diagonal. Langdon is diagonal. Should step to the middle. They're going to release it to Lang. Oh, he missed him. He was wide open on a wing. Carroll missed him. The diagonal pass would have worked perfectly. And Langdon was over there begging for begging. the ball. Even after he missed him the first time, he was wide open. Now he's going to try a ball. Avery being chased by Miller. Shot clock at 12. Crowd cheering defense. Wojciechowski kicks it outside. Carowell for three. Wojo kept it alive, but Wojciechowski will be called for the foul. Wow. I thought maybe no call in that situation. Two guys going for a rebound 20 feet from the basket, Mike. Mike Krzyzewski thought exactly the same thing. I mean, Wojo and McIntyre battling for that ball. You would think there'd be a no call right here. Take a look at these two going up for the ball. I don't know about that one, baby, but I'll tell you one thing. This crowd is alive in this club. you got to salute Clemson for not folding. And McIntyre, the Tigers' best free throw shooter, eighth in the ACC, has tied the ball game. Ten points for Terrell McIntyre. Well, when he's healthy, they're a different basketball team. And here they're so tough. They take the lead. Duke's now got to respond to the challenge of being behind. Clemson had not had the lead since the first two minutes of the game. Carowell, right back for the Blue Devils. Well, he did a great job attacking the pressure, getting the numbers three on one, bringing the ball right into the lane. A what minute, a ten to go, Duke by one, trying to protect that number two ranking. It was a great game last year. Duke would have won if Greg Newton would have held on to the ball. Not a penetration by Wojo, but eventually Clemson won that game in overtime here. Oh, Jameson, so strong, so and it's strong. stuck. What a defensive play by the best defender they got. Shane Battier responds to Diaper Dandy with a tremendous block shot. See, they're going to put the ball in Langdon's hands. They're saying, get yeah, foul me. Tony Christie, foul me. I want to go to the line. Foul me. Look at him handle the rock. Duke with six block shots tonight. Battier has been sensational in the middle. That, must, that might be the best block shot of the day for Duke right oh, there. Oh, it's huge because Jameson had such a big night. And remember, people, Clemson's back is against the wall. They're five and seven. It starts with the block. Shane Battier says, no, no, Mr. Jamison. Get it out of here. Get it out of here. Then we look at Langdon, the big fella, trying to make the big play with the drive to the goal. They want the charge, but they call the block. If Jamison had stayed planted, he might have gotten the charge, but he was moving sideways, and the Duke bench goes crazy. Oh. Rashawn McLeod leading the cheers as the Blue Devils go back up by three, and they have a free throw coming from the Assassin. ESPN's presentation of NCAA Basketball is brought to you by Chrysler. Engineered to be great cars. Trey 
Elgin Langdon's only three-pointer of the night. He has 16 points, and that's the margin right now. 67 to 64, 23 seconds to go. Langdon will go to the line where he has missed only once tonight and only eight times all season long. He could make it a two-possession game. Yeah, it's a big one right now mathematically, but there's still plenty of time left. You mentioned he only has one three that he's made because they've done a great job, Rick Barnes and his staff, getting his team to extend on him defensively. Four-point game as Langdon knocks it down. You don't have to think about three right now automatically. You can get a quick douche, you get it. If you got the three within your offense, you shoot it. Taking a lot of time. Buckner into the lane. Spun out. Jamison. Well, Jamison working on the glass. Good Boy, Battier play. did a smart thing there. With Jamison inside, he didn't try to block that one. Just let him have the deuce with 11.3 to go. Excellent job working the glass. Buckner took the high percentage shot as well. Didn't go down, but Jamison was right on the offensive board. Sports Center coming up as soon as we're done here. Dan Patrick and Kenny Mayne, they'll get you caught up on all the action, including some more NFL signings as the free agency period is really cranking up. And with the uh, new television contracts, a lot more money for superstars in the NFL. The lead is only two. So you're going to watch Buckner slide in the lane. Now, Harold Jamison, see, by the help by Battier, he's got inside position. As soon as Battier rotates over, Jamison has got the interior, and he owns it with that big body, and he's been so effective working on the inside here tonight. Now you want to get it to Langdon or Wojciech. Great hustle. Your good free throw shooters, but tremendous defense by Miller to knock it away. 10.8 left. I'll tell you, you got to really salute these kids from Clemson and Rick Barnes and his staff for the way they have really fought and not folded against Duke. They didn't allow them to knock him out. Got to watch the five-second count. McIntyre knocks it away. 10.2. Duke's going to get a timeout. They don't like their alignment right here. They're not getting any screens, not stepping to the ball, bringing it to the coffin corner. That's a no-no. You don't want it in that corner. Interesting that Duke is playing with Langdon near midcourt, Dick. And if they get it to him, it's almost on a breakaway. Yeah, well, they're trying to throw the ball to the guard and then put the ball over the top of the trap to Langdon. They feel they can make the first pass in bounds. They can get the ball in his hands. They have tried to get it to Wojciechowski twice. He is a 76% free throw shooter. And just as, as cold-blooded as it gets at the end of a ball game. I'll tell you one thing. If you look again at the end result, if Duke is to walk away from here with a W and you walk into the locker, Room of Clemson, you salute the effort, but once again, you look at the stat sheet and you look at that free throw line and you say, now instead of five losses by five and under, it's six, and we've shot under 60% again. We have no one to blame but ourselves. And a critical ball game in case you joined this late with Georgia Tech winning tonight. Clemson would have to match that victory to stay in a fourth place tie. If they lose, they go to five and eight, which means, uh, we'll use the phrase again, they might really be on the ball. The last team to get in four games under 500 in a conference was 1991. Johnny Orr and Iowa State. They were five and nine in the conference when it was the Big Eight, and they got a bid. Since then, that's never happened. 20 teams have been under 500. Nine from the ACC have gotten into the big dance. Here are the ACC teams that have made it in uh, since 1984. Virginia four times. And in 1991, they had a couple of Georgia Tech and Virginia. They expect to have two, maybe three this year. You don't see anybody up there, though, six and ten. No. And here it is, inbounds of the ball. So important right here. Oh, that's a bump immediately. Christie commits the foul with 9.7 seconds to go. That'll be four on Christie. The guy they fouled was Carowell, who is only 66.7% from the line. Yeah, that's a good foul for them right now. If you're going to put someone to the line, except Chris, who made a big play when they were on the ropes in that three-on-two attack when he scored in the lane, was big. Tonight has not shot a free throw, and these are major right here. Tremendous pressure. It is a two-shot situation as both teams have committed more than 10 common fouls. But it's the big one right Swish. now. It's the big one. If you can get it to a four-point situation, make it a two-possession game with less than 10 seconds, they could be in pretty, pretty good shape. 
This would make it a two-possession ball game. Carowell, as Duke has hit 15 out of 19 free throws, make it 16 out of 20. Good pressure here, but you don't want to foul. You want to extend defensively, make them have, take some time off the clock, bring the ball up the bat, up the, up the court, but you don't want to foul right here. You don't want to foul. McIntyre for three with time running out. Jamison after the buzzer. What a great and win. Duke has survived a tremendous effort by the Clemson Tigers, who had knocked them off three times in a row in this building and nearly did it again tonight. What a great win for Duke to get out of here. They met the real challenge. This club was ready to play Clemson. They had a great effort, just didn't make free throws. Now, a must situation on a road. They cannot afford another loss in the ACC, Clemson. Duke with its 24th win of the year. Stay tuned for Sports Center up next. You're watching ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Dick Vitale, this is Mike Patrick. Good night from Clemson, South Carolina.